Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about the latest ICOM radio, the IC705. It seems a lot of the popular ham radio channels have published videos on this radio, but they're usually regurgitating exactly the same marketing information we would expect when comparing radios in the amateur radio community. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to talk about what the IC705 represents to the portable amateur radio operator in the field, how we're going to make the best of the feature set that it offers us, and why the bottom just fell out of the resale value of your Yezu FT818. All right, guys, let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign narrative. It's extremely important we start this discussion from the perspective of the field radio operator. The operator going far or even not so far off the beaten path in an effort to test his or hers radio equipment and communication skills, using every conceivable advantage to field the most effective ham radio field station to meet our own individual goals for that field station's deployment. It doesn't matter why we're out there, having fun, on vacation, or simply testing our own communications capabilities. What truly matters is you're absolutely passionate about operating in the field, and you want the best possible radio allowing you to achieve that. If you can understand so far where I'm coming from with this discussion, then this video is for you. We received our first look at the ICOM IC705 at the Tokyo Ham Fair, in September 2019. It's basically an all-mode, all-band radio operating from HF, 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. It's got 5 watts output using the internal battery and 10 watts output from an external supply. It's got the same or a very similar display as the IC7300, along with VHF-UHF capabilities from the recently released 9700. And as we would expect from ICOM, it's got full D-Star capabilities and much more. The haters would have us believe these are simply bells and whistles, but I completely disagree. In fact, I'm starting to wonder if the team behind the development of the IC705 hadn't watched the 5 Reasons the Yezu FT818 is a complete fail video I published earlier this year. And come on guys, if you really think about it, the IC705 is everything the Yezu FT818 should have been. That doesn't mean I'm a hater, I'm just pragmatic. Now I've been using the various models of the Yezu FT817 almost since it was released in Europe back in the day. It was definitely an innovative radio, but it was never a good radio. And after adding a filter, upgrading the batteries, adding DSP, along with an external audio interface and external tuner because it has neither of those. We did our best to modify, update, and upgrade this radio ourselves, filling the gap that Yezu left us in. We've done absolutely everything we can to add or increase the functionality and capabilities of the Yezu FT817 and 818, sometimes with pretty good results. In the end though, Field radio operators are pretty pragmatic. We want features we can use, and we don't want to carry accessories which should have been included with the radio in the first place. Enter the ICOM IC705. Now based on the pre-release information we received from ICOM, the IC705 has some pretty interesting features for the field radio operator. Let's go through what I think are the top picks for the field radio operator. Then I'll tell you how we're going to make use of those features in the field. Now before we move forward, it's important to point out QRP is not synonymous with CW. In the 21st century, more and more amateur radio operators are getting out in the field and operating QRP. But they're not doing it with a CW paddle. They're actually doing it with narrow bandwidth digital modes. And from what we see so far, I believe the IC705 is going to be a magnificent companion for the HF digital mode operator in the field. This brings me to the first benefit of the ICOM IC705 compared to the Yezu FT818, compared to the Elecraft KX2, and compared to the Elecraft KX3. It has a built-in sound card. 
Having data modes with an internal sound card is magnificent, but we also need to talk about cat control. So both cat control and data are available over a single USB cable. The KX2, the KX3, and the Yaesu FT818 are a no-go. Now sticking with USB for a moment, there's another really cool feature which no other radio has. That is charging over USB. Now I plan on taking advantage of this feature by using a small solar panel with the USB output to charge up the 2 amp hour lithium ion battery which powers the radio. Sticking with power for a second, the IC705 uses the Bravo Papa 272 lithium ion batteries from the India Delta 51 and the India Delta 31. We should also point out it's a lithium ion battery and lithium ion gets almost double the usable capacity as an equivalent nickel metal hydride or lead acid battery. Finally, let's consider for a moment that the Bravo Papa 272 battery is 2000 milliamp hours. Now I run my Yaesu FT891 at 100 watts at a typical duty cycle for 5 or 6 hours using a 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate pack. Assuming the receive current is going to be something similar to the IC7300 or less, I believe we'll be able to get 2 to 4 hours of runtime with a typical duty cycle from that pack. Let's not forget this goes hand in hand with the USB charging and if we use a solar panel, we actually extend the runtime of that battery. So now let's talk about the display. There's at least three different camps on this topic. Those operators saying, why the heck would you put a touch screen colored display on a QRP rig? Those of us concerned about the additional current draw from a color touch screen display. And those of us understanding the benefit of having a display we can actually see and use. Now, it wasn't until I got the Yaesu FT891 that I understood the benefits of having a display I could actually see. Now, for operators like myself who take advantage of variable bandwidth filters and the ability to shift those filters up and down the spectrum, having a clear view of the spectrum and the signal I'm working with is critical. It's an incredibly intuitive way of working. Now, is it worth the additional current drain? Well, that depends on the operator. For me, and as long as it's not too bad, I think the benefit of having this display outweighs the negative of the additional current drain. Now it's time to have some fun. Let's talk about planning a go kit for the ICOM IC705. Now let's remember what I'm choosing here is based on my own personal preferences and the way I operate. I also know we all have totally different ideas and opinions about the kit we take out in the field, so use the comments to share your ideas with the rest of us. Now the very first thing I want to do is take advantage of that USB charging. So like I've done for many years, I'll deploy a small flexible solar panel to power and charge the IC705 in the field. The difference in the way I'm planning to do it now versus how I've done it in the past is I won't need the external battery pack as an intermediary. Next we have to deal with not having an internal tuner in the IC705. We can deal with this by using resonant antennas. And that's the way it has to be because I'm not willing to carry an antenna tuner with a QRP radio anymore. Next I'm going to get myself four pieces of the Bravo Papa 272 batteries for 10 amp hours of portable power. For extended field communications, I'll utilize one of my very popular DIY lithium iron phosphate portable power supplies. Now you'll get to see this 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate portable power supply featured in an upcoming video, but for now, this pack will definitely power the IC705 for days in the field. We'll simply plug it into the DC power jack, we'll get 10 watts of output from the IC705, and we can also power other equipment for our station in the field. Now finally we can start talking about data communications with the IC705. As many of you already know, the Raspberry Pi has been a part of my operations for about a year now. It hasn't always been easy to integrate it into the station because of the wire mess, the audio interfaces and all the junk that goes along with uh, a radio without an internal audio codec. With the one wire hookup over USB for data and CAT control on the IC705, we alleviate the wire mess we've had with radios like the FT817, 
the FT891, the Allocraft KX2, KX3, and so on. So all we have to do is build a Raspberry Pi which is worthy of the ICOM IC705. So, let me know what you think. Even if you disagree, the only thing I ask is that you are polite about your argument, feedback, or ideas. Seriously though, guys, I think we have a magnificent QRP radio on the way. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.